This is Joe David Padrone. He spent the last 20 years behind bars for the Mary Street murders. It's a crime that he says he didn't commit. The Innocence Project of Texas is taking his case and now following the findings of a local district court judge, he may be released. I sat down with Padrone and his family to hear his story in this Six Investigates exclusive. I never really thought that I could do this do almost 21 years. It's been 20 years and six months, actually. I never thought that I can, I can, I can endure this type of, of, of stress. In 2002, police arrested Padron on the charges of killing two men on Mary Street in what investigators called a gang-related crime. The Nueces County District Attorney's Office, who did not have any physical evidence against Padron, used testimony from a witness who changed his story after prosecutors offered him a plea deal on a separate case. After numerous attempts trying to get him to cooperate and find out who did this so they could go get him, finally they offered him a deal. Um, you know, he ended up getting probation. For five felony charges, where do they do that? Five felony charges, and all you have to do is lie. The prosecution also used jailhouse informants who claim that Padron admitted to some involvement in the murders. It's a type of informant that Mike Ware with the Innocence Project of Texas calls misinformants. These are a different kind of witness. Even the legislature recognizes that these kinds of witnesses are treated differently than every other kind of witness because these laws only apply to these kinds of witnesses. That's how dangerous all of them are. These informants were also compensated by the prosecution. Witnesses who testified at our trial, right? Who got these deals, probate, looking at 25 years to life, Ended up with two years probation. There are laws in place that limit the scope of these witnesses and require the prosecution to inform the jury of any deals that have been made. Those laws were not in place during Padron's trial in 2004. Each of these witnesses had already been facing time, 25 years to life, and in one case, the death penalty. And Everybody knew that all you had to do was lie, make up something about any case, big case, and you can get a deal. But now witnesses are coming forward. In February of this year, one witness said the prosecutor on the Padron case gave him a deal to testify in another case. Testimony he now says was false. I don't even sleep. I can't sleep. In my heart, I know that I was wrong. And to this day, I think about it every day. There's an innocent man in prison because of, you know, testimony that I gave. The truth is the truth. I think it is long overdue that, you know, the truth comes to light. I'm getting old, man. One day I may die and the truth may never be told. The Innocence Project of Texas also claims that the prosecutor, James Sales, demanded at least one witness change their testimony and threatened him with a death penalty if they didn't. Did he make it real clear to you that if you turned it down, that he was going for the death penalty? Yes, sir. We are innocent until proven guilty. Our prosecutors are not supposed to cheat. We're not supposed to rewrite testimony. We're not supposed to say, hey, I'm going to give you this deal if you change the truth. We did reach out to sales several times over the last few months for comment on these allegations, but have yet to hear back. He was wrongly convicted, and for me, he has suffered long enough, and, and this is his chance to make it right. Padron's 20-year prison stay has also had an impact on his family, especially his two daughters, Samantha and Liberty. I feel like he's missed out on so much, just being with family, missing out on his daughter's life. I mean, my whole life I didn't have him, so it was very hard, you know. 31, and I've, I don't know him either. He's been incarcerated my whole life. Meanwhile, Padron's mother hasn't given up hope that her son will one day come home. This is not fair. And this is not justice, but truth will prevail because it, this is the truth. Joe David, mother, come home, Miko. Miss you. Now find
findings by District Court Judge Ina Klein say that Padron's conviction should be set aside and he should be given a new trial based on the state's use of false testimony. Now, the Court of Criminal Appeals will make the final decision if granted. The Nueces County District Attorney's Office must then decide if it will retry these cases. For Six Investigates, Brian Hoffman.